Hello, welcome. This is a SmartHoping.com financial model overview. This is a golf course five-year monthly and annual financial model. It's a full simulation. Uh, I've upgraded it recently to have uh, financial statement outputs, income statement, balance sheet, cash flow statement, monthly and annual, as well as a cap table for more detailed investment summaries if needed, um, and a CapEx schedule with depreciation. And I'll get into that because it's, it's specific to golf courses, uh, the way they do it. So that was an interesting part of this. And so what I'll do here is I'm going to go through each tab, explain what's on it. And so uh, you see how to use the template. And again, the, the purchase uh, link will be in the description box below, as well as I'm going to post the template to um, some vendor sites I have as well. <clears throat> so firstly, we have the global control tab. Here you can define the company name, which is going to flow through to the income statements. You have the launch year, which is going to define just the timing of the model um, and what year it starts. Uh, this will also affect all the drop downs in all the light yellow tabs uh, and what date ranges they give, because it'll give 60 months of time based on this launch year start date. Uh, you have the launch date, end month if applicable, and then you can also define if you want to include a terminal value at the end month or not. If so, you can define the EBITDA multiple earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, amortization. It's basically just showing you, it's taking the 12 month trailing annual cash flow, multiplying it by this multiple. And that's the exit value. There will also be exit value of the land. Uh, then we have some cash sources here. So if you're gonna do any debt funding, you can put that in. Then the model will, um, use all these assumptions, all the startup costs and any burn to figure out the minimum amount of equity required to keep a cash position above zero uh, for the life of the model. Now, the in investors and owners equity, when that, that's going to be defined on the cap table. So you can see over here on the cap table, this minimum 4.7 million uh, auto filling, and then you could define shares, percentage of share types, and the investment amount coming from each outside investor and inside investor. If you just have one and you just want it to always default to the minimum equity, you can zero everything out and just have everything flow to this overflow, which is always going to take any remainder. So if you put zero everything out, it'll just all flow to here. and Just make sure your uh, stock is all 100% for these. Um, or otherwise, you can uh, have other, if you have other investors or, you, or the owners have invested money, you can put that there in their relevant share of the company. These should always be zeroed out. And then there's an um, internal rate of return calc uh, and distribution contribution summary for each individual and an aggregate right here. And then if we go down, this is just that equity uh, percentages. And then we have tax rates. If you want to include tax rates, you can. It, you'll see on the income statement cash flow, that's where that will flow to. Um, and if not, you can zero these out uh, to to not see any taxes and just see kind of the cash flow before tax. Um, but if you want to see the effect, you can put put some rates in here. Finally, on the global summary, we have check. Uh, these are all standardy checks to make sure all the different like the financial statements match up with the executive summary, the distributions, the monthly and annual detail. All of those are all representing the same data, so they all should zero out. Um, so this, just make sure they do. So these are all zero, that means you definitely are congruent in all your numbers. And you should be able to change every light yellow cell in the model, and these should always, always uh, zero out, as long as you're not putting in assumption, assumptions that are uh, not logical. For example, if you, you wouldn't um, not include or you wouldn't put a terminal value here and put a zero here. That's not logical. If, if it's going to include a terminal value, then you have to have some multiple. Otherwise, just hit no here. Uh, so, so you just fill this out like it's actual, you know, you're, you're trying to build your business case. Revenues. So for the golf course, it's a little bit uh, interesting. You could go a membership route which this is not that this is a um, walk-in fee route where you have um, you know golfers that come in and they pay a, a, a round price and based on how many golfers you have over time that's going to be your top line revenue 
So on this, you can choose to start month when you actually begin business. So because the launch year is defined here, but the actual start month of operations would be defined right here. And so when that month hits, you'll see um, you can find assum assumptions each year for the playable hours per day, the average minutes it takes to play 18 holes. So then you get total playable minutes per day. You have time between the groups and minutes on average, total playable rounds per day, then the percentage utilization. So this says based on the maximum possible rounds, how many of that, how many of those, uh, what's the utilization of that? So then the actual rounds you're selling per day would be this number. And then you have playable days per month. And then based on that, you can see number of rounds sold per month in each year, average price per round, average players per round, and then you get total monthly revenue. So that's your uh, assumption structure bottom up to figure out um, on average what you think your monthly revenue is going to be over time. Uh, then we have other ancillary revenue. So again, this can be a start month as well. And you can define a percentage of golfers that buy food and drinks, the average order value. Then you see their revenue here, the average cost of goods sold on that, um, cost of goods sold, other overhead of that. And then we have operational costs. Or I'm sorry, uh, overhead costs. And then you have monthly profit. So that all flows through uh, to the model. And this is where you'll probably spend most of the time figuring out like how much revenue you might be able to make over time and what's feasible, what pricing you're going to charge, all of those kinds of things. Uh, construction land, pretty straightforward. So you have, uh, you know, potentially a land purchase to build a golf course. And then you have 18 holes. You have the price you're going to pay or the cost you think is going to be um, for each hole. And then you've got total construction costs total land costs, total costs, and then here's where it gets tricky. So depreciation has to be, uh, so on, on uh, you can't depreciate land, but some of the holes might have construct like equipment on the, on it that is depreciable. So what you can do is I've set it up so you can define a percentage of the total hole cost, which would be these. You can define a percentage of those that are depreciable, and then they'll, they'll, that'll flow through the depreciation. The rest of it is just added to the cost basis of the land. So you can see um, if the total whole construction cost is $3 million, we're saying 776000 can be depreciated. <clears throat> the other $2.3 million is just added to the land cost to get a land basis here. And that'll be important for the financial statements to show. Then I have just regular uh, operating expenses. So these are just fixed monthly costs. You put in the monthly cost in each year, the start month of those costs, and they, I've just got a bunch of sections for that, labor and maintenance, uh, and any marketing. Uh, so that's pretty straightforward. Startup costs, these would be any one-time expenses before, and they can't be counted anywhere else, and these are non-depreciable items. So these would just be like any legal consulting costs up front, um, maybe a website design, stuff like that. Uh, debt schedule, again, um, that's gonna flow from the global control tab right here, and then you could define the loan terms here. Um, and the, the first payment date is gonna define when the debt actually comes in. So if I set that to January, you can see on the balance sheet, I've got long-term debt here starting in January. If I were to put it to say April, you can see now it starts in April. I'll put it back to January. Now on the term on the exit month, if you do include terminal value, which we are in this case, it will assume that on that month any uh, remaining debt is repaid that exists. Capex. So here um, the first row is always for building. If there's any building here, and you'll define the cost basis of that, useful life, month of expenditure. You'll also include the value of sale. Um, now for the rest of these, the value at sale will be calculated based on any of the terminal value that's defined to be for fixed uh, costs rather than extraordinary income. And if everything's fully depreciated by the end of the, the, the template, 
uh, forecasted period, you would just put 100% on this. Um, but it's just for a tax calculation. So the second row is for a depreciable portion of the whole, uh, the whole construction costs. So here, remember, we said it was 776000 which is this number right there. And so that's going to have a useful life and then some depreciation. So you, all you'll fill out on this um, area is just the useful life on that one. Then you have uh, 14 other CapEx items. So these, these most likely be equipment um, for the golf course, maintenance equipment, all sorts of stuff like that. And you could, if you need to bulk them, you can bulk them all into one purchase. If you have all the, all like the useful life the same and the month of purchase is the same, then you could um, put them in bulk if you don't have enough spaces. Uh, cap table we went over, terminal value we went over. This is just showing these are the three items um, that affect terminal value. Uh, now the land cost does flow through to the cash flow here. So you can see this end amount, this 4.2 million is basically adding up the 410,000 plus the 3.8 million for the cost basis. So 3.8, 410, and that's how we're getting to 4.2 million for the sale depreciable assets uh, and slash land. Okay, so those are all the assumptions. We have uh, then the financial statement. So you've got income statement. We've got course fees, uh, food and beverage revenue. You've got the cost of goods sold for food and beverage, gross profit. Then you've got all your OPEX for for the course and everything else, labor, marketing, startup costs. Um, then you've got EBITDA, interest, depreciation, based on all those things we just defined for CapEx. And then you've got taxable income, taxes, and net income after tax. Income statement annual is the same thing, but on an annual basis. Balance sheet monthly, same deal. You've got our current assets would just be cash in this case. Um, Non-current assets are all the, the building, the fixed assets, and then the land. You've got accumulated depreciation, total assets. Liabilities, we're only doing basically the debt, uh, debt um, proceeds if you're financing any of the startup costs. And then owner equity would be all the investor contributions, retained earnings, and then you've got total owner's equity. Now, total liabilities plus owner's equity always equals assets, so it does in this case. That's good. That means everything checks out. Balance sheet annual is the same thing, but on an annual basis. Cash flow, you've got your operating activities, investing activities, financing activities, and you've got all those different items. And again, that's going to flow through to the balance sheet. And um, so you know your if, if the ba balance sheet ending cash position matches the annual detail ending cash position. In addition, so this also this doesn't include equity. So you just have to. So you can see on the sanity check here on the annual detail uh, check against monthly. I take the ending balance of the balance sheet cash minus the annual detail minus the equity required and that will always zero out. Uh, so cash flow, net change in cash per period. Then we've got executive summary. So this has some visuals. It also has the high level um, revenue and expense items down to EBITDA, other cash flow. So this is like a one snapshot view of the whole project um, all in one spot, as well as a, a project IRR. Distributions, this is your discounted cash flow analysis of the project as a whole. And then also from the perspective of the investor and the owners based on all the inputs from the cap table. Uh, you also got net present value here for each of these. Next up, some visualizations. So we've got revenue by type, revenue type percentage, cash flow post tax, um, expenses, five year totals, monthly cash flow versus cumulative. So this is your basically that's just showing your break even when your equity breaks even, 
And then EBITDA per golfer is a key metric I put in here as well. So EBITDA per golfer is basically saying how much cash flow are you generating on average per golfer, how much operating profit. Monthly detail is showing you the granular input, uh, basically all the assumptions. You've got your number of rounds sold, the revenue, ancillary revenue, total revenue, all your OPEX, labor and maintenance, marketing, food and beverage costs, total expenses, EBITDA, and this, the other cash flow items. So this is a little bit a combination of the income statement and executive summary, as well as just more granular details on all the costs and revenues. Annual details, the same thing, but on an annual basis. Uh, I also put in some notes and references here. Uh, if you're going to look into getting uh, started with a golf course, there's some links there you could probably check out. All right, well, that's all I got for you. Again, check out the link in the description box below if you want to buy this template. And I'll see you guys on the next one.